Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans, and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES. Scott Laborde and welcome to Step It Out with updates from the local restaurant, arts, and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tucker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss Poppy. Hello, Peg. Good to see you. <laughs> Hello. Actor, uh, performer, John Green. Hello, John. Hi, Peggy. How are you? <laughs> and another director here, too, Tori Hayward with uh, news. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Peggy. But news of this year's Shakespeare Festival at Tulane's production of A Comedy of Errors. We'll get the scoop from them. Hey, gentlemen, good to see you. Hi. Great to be here. Hey. And Alan Smason of TheaterCriticism.com and the Crescent City Jewish News. Hey, Howdy, Pat. Alan. And Poppy, local pie news. What a fun topic. Big news from Ferret Street. Our friends at Windowsill Pies now have seating both indoors and outdoors. This is a big deal for these two girls who have just rolled along into their bricks and mortar place during the pandemic and everything. Of course, we're talking about Nicole Iden and Marielle Dupree. And I want to remember, remind everybody that summer is pie time, too. And they're doing the most magical pie things in there. And don't just think dessert for pies, because their Creole tomato galette, which is just a fancy word for a small, look at that beautiful thing in the left in, on her well, it's whatever side you're looking at. It's a, that's a peach and a Creole tomato galette. They're fabulous. And she also, they're, they're making two-inch little baby pies in their bourbon pecan flavor. And, of course, we first met them when they won first place at Chocolate Sunday back in 2015 with their all, uh, all dark chocolate dessert tart with an Earl Grey caramel. They just won the New Orleans Food and Wine Festival best of show and sweets with their brandy cherry pie. And summertime, all I can say is key lime pie. That's <laughs> another reason to stop by when to sell pies. But go for breakfast or lunch. They've got seats and it's great in there. Mm. And then another new tip about a little place to stop for coffee is the new Envia Rose Cafe, which is on Aretha Castle Haley. It's about two blocks closer uptown from the Southern Food and Beverage Museum. You can't miss it because of the neon. This is a Creole coffee oh, shop that was started by Kirby Jones. There's some baked goods, but you're not going to stop there really for a meal. It's all about the coffee and the neon. Uh, they have a special Vian Rose special coffee with rose syrup and dried rose petals. And But go for that big, sexy neon. Nate Schaefer's business that is right there in the same building. It's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you so much, Poppy and John and Tori. I know that, of course, for the longest, you all have been the creators and the organizers of the Radical Buffoons, but this time you've been hired by the Shakespeare Festival to do a rather unique take on Comedy of Errors. Well, first of all, because we'll be showing some photos, the look of it. Explain that first. Yeah, so we decided to set the play in uh, 1983 Miami Beach. So what you're going to see is that, like, Early 80s pastels, homages to Miami Vice, to uh, South to Beach. Yeah, yeah, South yeah. Beach. South Beach. Yeah, so that's sort of that's sort of the the, the we like to say the dressing that we kind of um, put on top of the play itself. Yes, absolutely. It looks like so much fun. Now, you all are billed as co-directors. How does one co-direct a show? <laughs> you know, I, um, it's actually, I always think about something John told me a while, uh, you know, a long time back is in a normal process when there's one director, the director really doesn't have a another scene partner um, in a way that the actors do. Um, and so we've, over the kind of process of, over the time of working with the Radical Buffoons, have really 
fell into groove. Um, we come from very different backgrounds and have very different perspectives, um, but still uh, find ourselves being really attracted to the same type of work. Yeah, there's this interesting thing. Um, we do a lot of comedic work and a lot of physical work, and one of the foundations for that has to do with uh, status and the way people take space or own space. And usually status work in, in clowning and comedy is based on numerical ranking. Um, you know, there's a one and there's a two, there's a master, there's a servant, or there's a 10, there's an eight. Um, and the way that you know a really good partnership in life or on stage is when uh, partners trade off the one and the two without talking about this. You'll see this in any good relationship. So for us, working together in co-directing where we're looking at different things at the same thing differently, we've just gotten into our own uh, double act rhythm where sometimes Tori will take the lead and I'll fall back, sometimes I'll take the lead and he'll fall back. And I think it, it creates uh, an opportunity in the room for deeper work from everybody. And it just really, um, it kind of chips away at a very uh, unilateral, um, monolithic paternalism that's kind of inundated the world of making theater, making film for a long time. Yeah. Well, um, I love the fact, obviously, that Shakespeare is up and, you know, you all are doing a production. That's huge, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and you have many fans of the Shakespeare Festival at Tulane. Do you, these days, you know, with COVID concerns, uh, were you all pretty much able to rehearse in Lupin or, or where did you all rehearse? Yeah, we, we were really lucky in that a lot of the COVID planning we'd done and the plans we put in, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C, kind of uh, were able to be put aside because like the day before we went into the room, a lot of the requirements were lifted. So we actually were able to rehearse uh, in space, in the loop in the entire time. Uh, we were able to rehearse without masks for most of the time. Um, we were able to be closer. We've been able to add seats back. Um, and just the year we've been through, getting to be able to do a play in the old-fashioned way has been supremely uplifting and <laughs> really wonderful. Yeah, we've been really incredibly lucky. Our entire cast and crew are, are vaccinated, um, and so that's allowed a level of um, safety that may not have existed before. And so, you know, we've been really lucky in a lot of ways, um, but also really strategic and careful in our planning um, because one of the things I think we've learned over the last year is that safety, mental and physical safety, is incredibly important. <laughs> and um, make it, we were really intentional before going back into a room, before asking actors and a crew to come back into a room, um, making sure that we had a really clear idea of what that safety meant. That's great. Well, um, a little bit later in the show, we will show an exclusive excerpt of the show. But uh, we'll be back to you soon. But let's move over to Alan with theater news. Well, Other uh, theater of, news. of course, uh, also <laughs> on the Tulane campus, the beginning of the last weekend of Michael McKelvey's reign as artistic director at Tulane Summer Lyric, of course, is happening. That's the 50th anniversary production of Jesus Christ Superstar. And he has much to be proud of this Andrew Lloyd Webber and Tim Rice uh, production. Uh, make no mistake about it, though. This is not your daddy's Jesus Christ superstar. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of uh, of changes that have been giving new life in this production, adding new aspects never before seen on a stage at Summer Lyric. The reason is the creative team. Uh, they really address, um, uh, you know, when you talked about co-directors, uh, Peggy. Here they are, Michael <laughs> McKelvey and Polanco Junes Jr. They actually gelled and worked together as a unit. Of course, Polanco had been a director for uh, Songs for a New World earlier, uh, and of course uh, Michael uh, has been there with Diane Lala, who of course is also a choreographer like Polanco Jones Jr. She did A Grand Night for Singing. They all fabulously work together. The cast is led by Prentice E. Mouton. He plays a very chiseled Jesus, uh, but this is really not about the body casting. He really sings the role as intended. He leads a very diverse cast of players. Our own New Orleans is uh, Chase Kamada, plays opposite him as Mary, and her versions of Everything's Alright and I Don't Know How to Love Him are highlights of the show. Playing Judas, of course, is New Yorker Alex Stone, who has to turn on Jesus and reveal his whereabouts to the Pharisees, who in turn send him to Pontius 
Pilate and Herod for punishment. The conflict between Judas and Jesus, of course, is at the heart of what this musical or rock opera, as it was first termed, is all about. But the supporting cast of Keith Clavery as an Annas, Brian Sanford as Caiaphas, and Ken Good should also be noted. Also, a big shout out to Whitney uh, Mixon as playing Herod against gender and doing a magnificent job. The costumes by Casey Thomasy and the videos by James Lanius are beautifully rendered, and the modern set by Rick Paul also outstanding. Jesus Christ Superstar is something you're not going to want to miss. Get to the Tulane campus, go check it out. And again, thanks to Michael McKelvey, Tulane Summer Lyric is in a really good position. They have now plush seats in Dixon Hall and an endowment over $600,000. Congratulations. Wow, absolutely. Meanwhile, it's business as usual, Peggy, at the Cutting Edge Theater in Slidell. Their latest production is a musical written by Melissa Manchester. Yes, that Melissa Manchester. <laughs> and Rupert Thomas, who wrote The Mystery of Edwin Drood, is called Sweet Potato Queens. It's on stage now. The show's description, I think, says it all. It's about Lisa and her friends who grab life by the sequins, feathers, and tiaras. Sound interesting to you, Poppy? Yeah. And they live life on their own terms. <laughs> Sounds like life in New Orleans at Mardi Gras time to me. <laughs> so the it cast, does. as you can see, are, are really uh, dressed up to the nines and looking forward to seeing uh, you know, this particular work. And by the way, uh, Sharon Vaughn is also a writer of this. She wrote My Heroes Have Always Been Cowboys for uh, Willie Nelson. Saturday night, Melissa Manchester will be in the house in Slidell. I'll oh. be there. Wow. I hope to be able to see her. We are Facebook friends and uh, we'll hopefully uh, be able to share a little bit of information about this. This has only been available for about five years. And coming up next at Cutting Edge will be, yes, Andrew Lloyd Webber's Sunset Boulevard, which will start in August. Oh, wow. I look forward to that. I haven't seen a production of that. I think, what, when, uh, since Petulia Clark played it at the Sanger? Do you remember that, Alan? Uh, I think that, actually, Summer Lyric did do a version oh, of it with did? Laura Grice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm way behind. But, um, wow, that's really wonderful. I'm Thank waiting to so see much. Leslie Casté take on that role, though. Oh, <laughs> that would be great. All righty. Well, back to Poppy. And Poppy, drag queens buku. Oh, huh? sequins, rhinestones, all of that. <laughs> this Sunday, we're celebrating Christmas in July. July, and we're doing it with five drag queens at Two Jacks. They're bringing out their holiday best, so we want everybody else to bring out their holiday best and dress up, and then forever, we will never again feel like Christmas 2020 was the one that the Grinch stole. This is going <laughs> to fix the whole thing this Sunday. There's three courses, delicious Creole tomato and buffalo mozzarella salad. You get a choice of roasted fish or chicken Milanese. There's a blueberry and white chocolate bread pudding. And of course, three, look at that star, Alexander. <laughs> um, there's three hours to this extravaganza with bottomless mimosas and crazy fun. And all I can tell you is that that first one that we just had last month at Tujac's I, now, look at the people. They were, even if there wasn't a drag queen in the room, everybody was up from their tables and dancing together. There was a spontaneous conga line that went through the place. I have never seen such a fabulous party in my life, and I am looking forward to doing it Christmas style this Sunday. And in case you've ever worried about it, all of Poppy's pop-up drag brunches are child friendly. We do have children who come to ours, so you can bring anybody, bring, bring grandma, bring the babies, just come and have a really great time with us. Thank you so much, Poppy. And now back over to John and Tori, and we are going to see an exclusive expert, thanks to the Shakespeare Festival, uh, from Comedy and Era of Eros. Who wants to set it up for us? Uh, I can do it, I can set it up, I think. So uh, what you're about to see is a scene early on in the play. The main conceit of the play is that there are two sets of identical twins, uh, separate at birth. Um, oddly enough, each set of identical twins has the same name, but we won't hold that against <laughs> Bill Shakespeare. Uh, and so this is uh, Antiphilus and Dromeo of Syracuse, and they're in Ephesus, where they've landed. They, they're not from there. And they're admiring the town, and then they're approached by uh, Adriana, who is the wife of Antiphilus of Ephesus. So she believes that these two men are her husband and his, uh, his manservant, when in fact they're actually from a completely different place. And so that sense of confusion, uh, you know, erupts in a whole bunch of physical comedy because of the, you know, mistaken identities. This is one of the earlier moments of mistaken identities that start in the play. Okay, well, let's take a look. Comedy of Errors. <laughs> Did you converse, sir, with this gentlewoman? What is the course and drift of your compact? 
I, sir? I never saw her till this time. Villain, thou liest! For even her very words didst thou deliver to me on the march. I never stayed with her in all my life. How can she then thus call us by our names, unless it be by inspiration? How ill agrees it with your gravity to counterfeit thus grossly with your fool, abidding him to thwart me in my mood? Come, I will fasten on this sleeve of thine. Thou art an elm, my husband. I find. Oh, to me she speaks. She moves me for her theme. What, was I married to her in my dream? Or sleep I now and think I hear all this? What error drives our eyes and ears amiss? Uh, until I know this sure uncertainty, I will entertain this offered fallacy. Dragon, <laughs> go bid the servants spread for dinner. Oh, for my beads, I cross thee for a sinner. This is the fairy land where spite of spites, we talk with goblins, owls, and sprites. If we obey them not, this will ensue. They'll suck our breath, their pinches black and blue. Dromeo, why pratest thou and answerest not? Dromeo, oh. thou drone, thou stand, thou slut, thou son. Oh, oh, I'm transformed, master, am I not? So am I, and so am I. No, in my mind and in my shape. Oh, oh, oh. Thou oh, hast my own form. No, I am an ape. If oh. thou art changed to aught, tis to an ass. Tis true. She writes me, and I long for rest. Come, come, no longer will I be a fool to put the finger in the eye and tweet. Come, sir, to dinner. Tromeo, guard the gate. Strive and ask for your master. Pity me thine sport and let no creature enter. Come, sister. Tromeo, play a quarter left. Am I an earth in heaven or in hell? But sleeping or waking, mad or well advised, known to bees and to myself disguised. I'll say as they say in Persever so, and in the midst that all adventures go! Oh, master, shall I put her at the gate? Hi, and let none enter, lest I break your gate. Well, 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 well. And once again, a comedy of errors runs until <laughs> August the 7th. Go to NewOrleansShakespeare.org for tickets. And let's talk about, I, I love the combination of a little bit of South Beach and lots of physicality, right, John? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, always. always. You know, uh, we have photographers come to take pictures, and they're like, oh, this is shooting sports and not theater, because we do a lot of physical work, so everybody's moving around, everybody's changing places, everybody's just in their bodies. <laughs> yeah, once you walk into the Lupin Theater, you'll see there's aisles, there's, they're all over the place throughout the entire play. <laughs> yeah, we should actually point that out, that some of the audience, uh, uh, the way we've uh, sat the audience, there are risers on the side like a traditional theater, but we have about 18 to 20 seats in cafe tables decorated like a club in the morning uh, for people to sit at. So for audience members that like uh, an immersive experience, they'll be able to sit at these tables that'll have, you know, crushed napkins and half drunk drinks and it'll feel <laughs> like they've arrived at four o'clock in the afternoon at a beach club. <laughs> well, gentlemen, both of you wear many hats, and let's talk about the Radical Buffoons. Um, quite a collaborative. It's not just actors and directors, it's writers, it's folks who work backstage. Explain the Radical Buffoons. Yeah, and it's really actually not even uh, just uh, theater artists, really artists from all different types of backgrounds and different types of wor uh, work and life. Um, and over the years, um, we have found a way uh, to not only form a collective, but also pr to, to produce work, uh, work that's really exciting, work that is large in scope and an idea, uh, work that is highly physical. Um, we also do programming in three different tracks, and so we have a track for our young audience members, um, and so you'll see Rapunzel there on the screen. <laughs> um, we've also, the previous picture was barbecue, so we also do work um, in our main stage, which is more traditional developed work. Um, and then we also have a lab track, um, and this is, these are new works um, that are produced um, and go through the development research and development phases. Um, and so we are really interested in uh, a lot of our work, even some of our more traditional work starts with a big question um, and through the investigation and through bringing um, a ton of different collective uh, artist members on board, 
really driving toward working and finding the answer to that question. Well, I know you've worked uh, very collaboratively with the NOLA project and all around town on Le Petit. So in terms of a place to perform, you've played at the Lighthouse, the old yeah, uh, so, Lighthouse of the Blind yeah, you know, uh, one of, building yeah. on camp. You're all over the place, aren't you? Yeah, we're, you know, one of the, 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 the blessing and curse of being an itinerant company is you have to find creative places to do the work. Um, and we really uh, try to find places that match the, the, the energy of the play. So when we did Balloonacy, uh, which is a play for a one person play for kids between a man and a balloon, we wanted to pick a space to perform that we thought kids would be just as awestruck by the space as they were by the play. And so that's how we ended up at the Lighthouse. Um, we've done a lot of work at the Fortress of Lushington, which is a garage space and lab theater on the corner of Elysian Fields and Burgundy, um, which is kind of a fun, uh, grungy black box that gives us space to do experimentation. Um, we've worked outside, we've worked inside. Our, our feeling about producing work as the buffoons, whether it's traditional theater work, whether it's more experimental, is that you know the, the, the communal experience is whole. It's mm. not just seeing the play, it's getting to the play, being with people, experiencing it. So we really try and make sure that it's not just come sit in your seats, that from the minute you walk out your door to go see this work, that is when the experience for you begins. Okay, well, I know you have a, a season planned and looking forward to having you all back. But in the meantime, RadicalBavoons.com. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, yeah, and, um, and back to Alan for some online viewing opportunities. Yes, as, as I mentioned last week, there's some free opportunities like the Wolves at LincolnTheater.org uh, 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 if you go out and check that. But one of the things I wanted to talk about was A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Uh, Collaborazian, that is a group that promotes Asian equality and hoping to stamp out Asian and, and Asian Pacific hate has assembled an all-Asian cast of uh, Robert Lutbach and uh, that is Stephen Lutbach and Robert Friedman's uh, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. Uh, it's a superb cast and really nicely rendered video backgrounds and great orchestrations as for a very important cause too. The cost is pay what you can with a suggested ticket price of $21.15 which includes the handling charges. The show only runs uh, for a few more days about an hour and a half long but you'll thank me later. Go check it out. Also, another benefit performance this week is a reading with costuming featuring three Tony Award winners. Jason Alexander, who you see there, Patti Lapone, <laughs> who's obviously not having a great day, uh, and Santino <laughs> Fontana. The show also stars Michael McKean, who's famous from having played on Laverne and Shirley and a member of the fictional rockers Spinal Tap. Uh, again, uh, all three Tony winners are going to be in that uh, uh, Judgment Day by Robert Eulen. Again, the virtual reading starts on on Monday, the 26th of July, and runs all the way through August, a benefit for the Barrington Stage Company. And another show that I'll be reviewing this week is First Date, also on StellarTickets.com. It's a musical comedy starring America's Got Talent stars Diana DiGiarmo and Ace Young. They're a, a couple who met apparently on the show. They star uh, as a couple on a blind date where everything goes wrong. And uh, so I recommend that as well. And finally, for those of you who are interested a little bit in Yiddish theater, the um, uh, the uh, Yiddish theater Folkspiel, that's the uh, uh, theater company out of New York, they are actually having a Yiddish renaissance. It's a virtual concert mm. celebration featuring several of their past Wonderful uh, celebrations, including the Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof, uh, mm. America the Golden Land, and the Golden Bride. I really recommend you check that out. Again, it's free. Just have to register ahead of time. All right. Thank you so much. And now it's time for our Picks of the Week. Miss Poppy. If you're looking for something for the kids before they go back to school, No Lavore just opened up surprisingly two more sessions of cooking camp, August 2nd through the 6th and 9th through the 13th. It's not to be missed. Sign up quick if you want to do it. All right, John. Yeah, so uh, at the end of August, I believe on August 26th, one of our collective members, uh, Rebecca Elizabeth Hollingsworth, has been working on a new show uh, called The Fox Sisters, and it is going to have a sharing at the CAC where she's been in residency for the summer. All right, thank you. Tori. Uh, the next project, I'll uh, shamelessly plug. I, uh, auditions were just announced. I'll be directing Tell It To Me Sweet uh, with the NOLA Project by Brittany Williams. Um, we are looking for an eclectic cast of storytellers, all ages, all backgrounds. Um, so if you're interested in actually getting up on stage, uh, come and check that out and, uh, and send in an audition. All right, thank you. Alan. And I just mentioned Brittany Williams is the reigning stage door idol 
uh, winner because she was the last one before the uh, pandemic set in. So <laughs> she's also talented in other ways, too. By the way, let's just give a big shout out to the Sanger Theater. They reopened for the first time this week. And guess what? Tomorrow, tickets are going on sale for the Mannheim Steamroller Christmas show. That is just so wonderful. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's a wonderful treat. The show's one night only on Christmas Eve Eve. That's December the 23rd. And Peggy, guess what? I'll see you at the theater. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. And we have a congratulations to WYES staffer Robin Cooper, who has been named president and CEO of the station. Robin's been with WYES for 32 years. She succeeds Alan Pizzato, who recently retired. Congratulations, Robin. And now my pick, uh, looking ahead, St. Joseph Abbey is holding an artist retreat August 23rd through 27th. This is for artists to work on their own in, um, in the wonderful surroundings in a very inspiring setting. No formal instructions. You have to bring your own talent there. Tuition uh, includes lodging and food for four days and other amenities. So go to stjosephabbey.com slash retreat uh, August uh, for information. And by the way, next Thursday, we'll present a special edition of Steppin' Out, focusing on the latest news of the local dining scene. Poppy will, of course, join us along with Ian McNulty and Dr. Brobson Lutz, a true New Orleans, well, physician and gourmand. <laughs> and before we leave you, back to our, our extra special guest here with, uh, with uh, Tori and John. You all are not originally from here. What brought you to New Orleans? Yeah, I'm actually originally from Alexandria, Louisiana. Alec. Um, Alec. Alec. Uh -huh. uh, I moved away for college and said I would never live in Louisiana again. And then the first place I moved back to was New Orleans and <laughs> um, haven't been able to leave since. All right, John. Uh, I was actually uh, living in Singapore when I came to, vi yeah, when I came to visit in August in uh -huh. 2012. Uh, and uh, my foot hit the pavement and I thought, well, I, this is where I have to be. Everybody said, it's so hot. I said, that's not Singapore. And I never left. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, thank you all so very much. Thank you, Poppy and Alan, and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Rouse's is proud of the creativity and the unparalleled entertainment in New Orleans and honored to highlight it with their sponsorship of Steppin' Out on WYES.